illustrative of Germany's progress in aviation is the rocket jet plane ME-163, introduced to combat in the summer of 1944. These captured German films present an interesting study of the plane. External features of the ME-163 are short, squat fuselage, sharply swept back wings, and its single fin and rudder without tailplane or elevator. Tremendous jet thrust makes takeoff very fast. After takeoff, the undercarriage is jettisoned to save weight, for the ME-63 is a short-range airplane in which all is sacrificed to permit a fast-climbing single attack and breakaway. Rate of climb is 10,000 feet a minute. Low-grade fuel creates long white contrails. Speed varies in flight from 150 to 600 miles an hour. Endurance at full speed is limited to eight minutes, but gliding between short bursts increases flight duration to about an hour. Retractable skid is used for landing. The skid provides a method of braking, and landing can be made even on an unprepared field. Since the Germans probably passed on their plans for jet propulsion to Japan, it's possible that similar planes will appear in the Pacific. Speed of the ME-163 impaired its maneuverability. Our fighters could turn inside them and generally outfought them as the following gunsight aiming point camera pictures show. to follow are excerpts from a recent German newsreel and were not intended to be seen by us. They are released here by authority of our military intelligence for showing to the men and women workers in American wartime industries in order to better acquaint them with the phase of this global struggle about which much has been spoken but little seen. The power of the German industrial machine behind the Nazi fighting front. The scenes you are now seeing show Gestapo chief Heinrich Himmler reviewing a Hitler youth court. The remainder of this captured Nazi newsreel is in the nature of a report to the German home front on the achieving of quotas in the production of armament as set by Hitler himself. The Führer's headquarters. Reichsminister for Ordnance Albert Speer informed the Führer that all production goals have been surpassed. Hitler congratulates the heads of the German armed industry. Presents to Reichsminister Speer the Fritz Scott German Engineering Award in recognition of his service. Großkundgebung im Berliner Sportpalast zur Ehrung der deutschen Ingenieure. Mass rally in the Berliner Sportpalast, honoring workers and technicians in Nazi armed plants. Reichsminister Speer überbrachte den Rüstungsarbeitern und Ingenieuren den Dank des Führers für ihre Aufopferung. Reichsminister Speer expressed the Führer's thanks for the extraordinary achievement. Today we can look with pride to the fact that we have not only attained but far surpassed what the Führer asked of us. The achievements of the German worker are unique. Thanks to the German worker's diligence and willingness to serve, all records for arms production were broken. Production of steel was stepped up as special in action. Plant methods were improved to interchange of work practices. The munition production grew gewaltig an. Only in the last month, there was more munition. Last month alone, more munitions were supplied than in. So 
Verlust an leichten und schweren Geschützen wurde im Monat Mai gegenüber dem Durchschnitt des Jahres 1941 auf 400 Prozent gesteigert. The output of heavy and light guns in the month of May increased 400 Prozent as compared with the average for 1941. Guns for our torpedo boats and destroyers. Guns for our submarines. We will continue to supply our fighting front with new weapons and the final victory. Torpedoes. Torpedoes. Deadly weapons of our submarines are also being produced in ever increasing quantities. There's feverish activity in German shipyards. Just as the Führer proclaimed, we will keep on building new boats, more and more. The number of planes produced in May far exceeded the average for 1941. Here are the weapons for the hour of reckoning against British-American terror bombing. In this plant, our eight-wheel reconnaissance cars are built. Tank destroyers, fitted with guns of all calibers, capable of high speed. These features make them weapons of great power. The equipping of panzers, achieving results that exceeded all expectations. Production by our workers increased tremendously. A sword gun, the task laid for our infantry. In May alone, as many armored vehicles were supplied as in the entire year 1941. Tiger tank, one of our most powerful weapons. Tank destroyers ready for battle. Day after day, long trains loaded with ammunition and weapons of all types leave German armament plants. We pledge to our frontline fighters not only to fulfill our duty, but to exceed it in production, month by month. exceptional service in the cause of the Nazi armament program, a group of men received decorations. A foreman. Nazi front worker. General Major Expert. Another foreman. Direktor 
Honorable Dr. Walter Ruland. Armament executive. <laughs> Professor. Another executive. Nazi plant superintendent. Among those not receiving awards or decorations are the workers in Nazi labor battalions, the labor slaves from subjugated France, Poland, Holland, Belgium, Italy, who are forced to man the German war machine with Himmler's Gestapo guns at their backs. Absent also, or if they are present, it is only as ghosts, are the workers who defied the Nazi machine. But many workers still alive are waiting for the day when our troops enter Berlin. Dr. Goebbels, Nazi propaganda chief, closes the rally. He is assuring his German home front audience that Germany cannot be cracked either militarily or politically. The German line in Russia is holding. Look to the fear of our strength. They forced the German people to fight in defense of their own lives. So says Dr. Goebbels to his own people.